Hello, fourth grade math students. All right, let's wrap up the year here. We're looking at chapter 13, review of that unit on page 749 in your math workbooks. Well, let's run over some of this real quick here. I'm sure that you've been asked to complete the worksheets. But let's just take a look at what we got here. Starting on page 749, number one, for numbers 1A through 1E, select yes or no to indicate if a rectangle with a given dimension would have a perimeter of 50 inches. Remember, perimeter, perimeter equals the sum of the sides. So we're looking for a perimeter that's going to equal 50 inches. So let's see what we got. Length is 25 inches and the width is 2. 25 plus 25 is 50. 2 plus 2 is 4. That would be 54. That's not correct. 20 inches and 5 inches. 20 and 20 is 40, 5 and 5 is 10, 40 and 10 equals 50. So 1B would be yes. 17 and 8. 17 and 17 is 34, 8 and 8 is 16. 34 and 16 equals 50. So 1C would be yes. How about 15 and 5 inches? Well, if 20 and 5 inches was correct, then you know 15 and 5 inches has to be wrong. Matter of fact, it would only total 40 inches. 15 and 10 inches, however, 15 plus 15 is 30, 10 plus 10 is 20, 30 plus 20 equals 50. So 1E would be yes. Number 2. We're looking at a swimming pool. Let's go ahead and draw this on the board. What you have is a swimming pool inside an area. So we've got this and we've got a swimming pool inside. Okay, so this is your pool. What do they want us to figure out? Well, it's telling us that this dimension is 16, and I'm guessing meters. This dimension is 20 meters. <clears throat> the outside dimension from here to here is 26 meters. And from here to here is 22 meters. All right, so now we've got all the information we need to solve whatever they want to ask. What's the area of the pool? And the area of the pool and the walkway. So in order to find the area of the pool, and remember area is length times width base times height, you know, all those silly formulas we talked about yesterday. Anyhow, you got to multiply one side and the other side together. That's all you need to remember. 16 times 20. <clears throat> Do the math. So we got 20 times 16, and I can tell you that that's going to equal 320 just because I could do that in my head. So 320 meters, don't forget squared, squared meters. So the pool is 320. Now it wants to know what the area of the pool and the surrounding walkway. So now you're going to do 26 times 22. 26 times 22. 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 2 is 4, and 
1 makes 5, and we're going to have the same thing again here. So 2, 7, 572. So the entire area is 572 square meters. That was pretty easy. Is there another part to this problem? Let's see what they want. So we know 572 is the whole area. Part B, how many square meters of the tile will Marco need for the walkway? Oh, so now they want to know what the area of the walkway is around the pole. And that's simple. We know that total area is 572 meters. And the pole is 320. Subtract that. 2, 5, 252 meters squared. So the walkway around the pole is 252 meters square meters. I know you guys, I'm sure you're so good at this that I can't even stump you with a word problem. Let's go on to the next page. 750. Match the dimensions of the rectangles in the top row with the correct area or perimeter in the bottom row. So area is going to be in square measurements, and perimeter is just going to be in regular measurements. So area, let's see, we got length and width. So if we're going to get the area of that, it'd be 18 plus 10, it'd be 28. Is there anything down there with 28? No. If we're going to get the area of 5 and 9, we'd multiply those together, and that would be 45 square centimeters. Is there one of those answers at the bottom that's 45 square centimeters? Why, yes, there is. So you're going to match the first box on the first line with the last box on the second line. So what they're going to make you do here is they're going to make you solve it both ways. They're going to make you figure out the perimeter where you add it all together or the area where you multiply the two sides. Just remember, you've got two lengths and two widths. There's four sides on a rectangle for doing the perimeter. Number five, let's think smarter. A rectangular flower garden in Samantha's backyard has 100 feet around its edge. The width of the garden is 20 feet. So we're going to be solving for a missing value here, I kind of figure. So she got a garden, and we'll say that this measurement is 20 feet. And overall, the measurement around this thing is 100 feet. So all together, the perimeter is equaling 100 feet. So let's see what it's asking us to do. The width of the garden is 20 feet. What is the length? Well, put on your thinking caps here, kids. This is not so hard. You know there's four sides on a rectangle. You know that that side's 20, then this side's 20. All right, so we got 20 plus 20. That equals 40. We know that this is 100 feet, so we're going to take that 100, subtract the 40. That means we've got 60. 60 feet to account for here. And how do we decide what these two measurements are? Well, there's two sides, so you've got to divide that 60. you got to divide it by 2. And that's going to equal 30. So this dimension is 30. 
And this dimension also is 30. So you got 30 plus 20 is 50, plus 30 is 80, plus 20 equals 100. So the perimeter around our garden is 100. Is there more to this? Use the numbers to write an equation. Okay. So we know perimeter is 2 times the length and 2 times the width. So the perimeter is going to equal 2 times the length plus 2 times 20. 2 times the length plus 40. And then 2 times the length are, let's see, 60 would equal 2 times the length. So your length is going to be 30. Number six, Gary drew a rectangle with a perimeter of 20 inches. So now we've got a rectangle where the perimeter, the perimeter of this rectangle is 20 inches. Now they're going to try and stump you here. So it's 20 inches on the perimeter. Then he tried to draw a square with a perimeter of 20 inches. Well, if you're going to draw a square, each side has to be equal. And it has to total 20. So what times 4 equals 20? 5. So each side of the square is 5. 5, 10, 15, 20. Draw three different rectangles that Gary could have drawn, and then draw the square, if possible. Well, there's our square. That was easy enough. 4 times 5. They're saying, draw three different rectangles that equals 20. Well, if you went 8 on this dimension, 8 and 8 is 16, that leaves 4, so that means this dimension can be 2. So we got 8, 10, 18, 20. So it can be any combination of numbers that come out and can be divided evenly. So let's just pick numbers at random here. Let's see what happens if we make this 6. 6 and 6 is 12. Subtract that from 20, it leaves 8. So that means if those two sides are 4, 6 and 4 is 10, and 6 is 16, and 4 is 20. So you can just plug in whatever numbers you want. Now we've used even numbers, what happens if we use an odd number? Let's say we use an odd number, and this is 7. 7 and 7 is 14, that leaves 6. So that means these sides are going to be 3 each. Notice how all four numbers are odd numbers? I wonder if that holds true in all cases. What happens if we use another odd number. Now we've already done five, so and we've already done three, so let's try nine. Nine's an odd number. Nine and nine is 18. That means the other two sides have to together equal two, so each side would have to be one. So again, you have an odd number followed by another odd number. Just a little curious thing about calculating perimeters. So far, nothing really to stump you here. 
Uh, let's see what number seven is. Amy and Bert are drawing plans for rectangular vegetable garden. And Amy's plan to garden is 13 feet 10 inches, and Bert's plan to garden is 12 feet 12 inches. Select true or false. False for the following four questions. I'm going to let you think through that one because you're going to have to do some calculating to determine which ones are true and which ones are false. Let's look at number eight. A farmer planted corn in a square field. One side of the field measured 32 yards and wants to know what the area of the cornfield is. So we've got a square cornfield. And if it's 32 yards on one side, it's got to be 32 yards on all sides. And to solve this problem, it would be 32 times 32. And that will give you the area in square yards. You can do the calculating. I want you to do the multiplication. 32 times 32. You can do it. Let's go down to, well, number 12 is another, or 9 is another, another one of those where it wants to know what the area of the frame is around the picture. And we did one of those problems yesterday, and we did one earlier with the pole and the walkway. It's the same operation. Get the area of the whole rectangle, subtract the area of the picture from that. The balance is actually what the area of the frame is. Number 10, Kelly has 236 feet of fence. So this is going to be a perimeter problem. I can tell you that right now. 236 feet of fence. Now, you notice in word problems, I take the numbers out of the word problems because, you know, the words can not really make that much difference except for what it asks you to do. Now, it's going to enclose a rectangular space for her dog. So, now we know that that 236 feet is going to go around her dog run. She wants the width, the width to be 23 feet. So this is 23, and if that's 23, this is 23. Now we're going to have to solve for the unknown. I can see it coming. Label the length and the width. Well, so we're going to add those two together. 23 plus 23. That's 46. Now, we know the whole thing is 236 feet. So we're going to subtract 236 minus 46 equals 190. So we know that the missing dimensions total 190 feet. We've got to divide that number by 2, and that's going to equal 95, right? 95 plus 95 is 190, so this dimension is 95 feet, and this one's 95 feet, not degrees, feet. So her dog run is going to be 23, 23 feet by 96 feet, or 96 feet by 23 feet. Add those together, and it will equal 236 feet. That way you know you got the right, the right answer. Well, boy, we're just about done with this. Ooh, there's one. Use either addition or subtraction to find the area of the parking lot. Now, this is one of those problems where you've got an odd shape. And it wants to know what the area is. Now, there's all kinds of yards, everything in yards. Yes, everything is in yards. 5 yards, this is 20 yards, 
and this is 10 yards. All these measurements will come into play when you go to figure out how to solve this. This is 10 as well. Because they're even. So this is also 5. And this is also going to be 20. The only thing missing is this up here. And I can tell you without even looking at the book, it's got to be 40. Because here's 30. Here's 5. And here's 5. So 30 plus 5 is 35 plus another 5. So this has got to be 40. Now see, if they asked me to solve for that missing dimension, that's just how easy you could have found that answer. Now, it wants you to figure out what the area of this is. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw an imaginary line here. Now you've got one rectangle and a second rectangle. Length times width. This is 20, and across here is 40, and that's going to equal 0, 800. 20 times 40 is 800. This rectangle is 10 by 30. And that's going to equal 300. So all together, you've got 800 plus 300 equals 1,100. And that's yards squared. Pretty simple. I know you guys can do it. Oh boy, number 12 is one of those where you got a whole bunch of different choices there and you gotta you gotta figure out what's right and what's wrong. Let's take a quick look at it. Chad's bedroom floor is 12 feet long, 10 feet wide. He has an area rug on the floor that's 7 feet by 5 feet. Which statement tells how to find the amount of the floor that is not covered by the rug? So you're looking for the border area of floor that's around the outside of the rug. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply 12 times 10. That's 120. And then 7 times 5 is 35. You're going to subtract the 35 from 120. And that will tell you how much floor is around the rug. So you do that math and there are six different methods there. You have to choose the one that will give you that correct answer. Number 14. 14 is uh, the same thing that we just did on that parking lot problem except this is a living room and a dining room and they nicely draw that out for you, but it's missing. It's missing a number. So I want to just show you how you figure that number. It's missing a number. It's telling you this is 15 feet. This is 20 feet. This is 20 feet. And the top of this is 30 feet. And that's all the information it gives you. But there's some missing dimensions. What is this dimension? All right, what's that dimension? And what is this dimension right here? So you've got this and this that isn't defined for you. How do you find it? Well, use your logic. If it's 30 feet across the top, 20 feet here, then this dimension has got to be 10, because 20 plus 10 equals 30. Now, this dimension, you do the same thing. It's 20 feet here and 15 feet here. This dimension has to be 5, 15 and 5, so that the overall dimension would then be 20. 
So you can figure out missing dimensions real easily just by looking at the drawing. Look at the dimensions they give you. Now, I'm not sure what they're asking you to do here. They're probably asking you to solve this for area. So, if you draw your line here, then this becomes 20 by 20. So this is a square, 20 times 20, and that equals 400. And then over here, you've got 10 feet across. From here to here is 10 feet. And then from here to here, we determined is 20. But we're only going to use the 15 feet because this is all we're trying to figure out. So 10 times 15 is 150. So 400 plus 150 is 550 square feet. See? That wasn't so tough. We got any more problems? Oh, yes. On 754, which rectangle has a perimeter of 10 feet? Well, all four sides, when they're added together, have to equal 10 feet. So take a look at what the dimensions are. I can tell you right away, A is correct. A is 10 feet in perimeter. Number 17 is making you have to think a little bit. Find a number of square inches in the folder that is not covered by the sticker. So now you have to do the square area of the folder minus the square area of the sticker so that it tells you what the area is without the sticker. So I'll let you think through that one. Everybody gets really stumped on that. Then ask your teacher to have me demonstrate it. And number 18. Boy, there's a funny looking. Looks like a capital letter T. She's cutting her initial from a piece of felt. For numbers 18A through C, select yes or no to tell whether you can add the products to find the number of square centimeters Tricia needs. So it's saying 1 times 8 and 5 times 2. Now you're missing a dimension there. So now you got to be a little smarter than the picture. You see across the top of the T, we'll just do this real quick. Across the top of that T, it tells you that this is 8. Right? And it tells you that each one of these is 3. So 3 and 3 is 6. So the missing dimension here, the width of this, has to be 2. Because 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 3 is 8. So the total dimension across is 8. So that's how you find that missing number. And it's asking you a 5 times 2. Well, we know that this dimension here is 5. And so it would be 5 times 2, that's 10. And then 8, this dimension here is 1, I think, yes. So 8 times 1 would be 8. So you've got 8 centimeters and 10 centimeters for a total of 18 centimeters. 3 times 5 and 1 times 8. No, that would not be correct. 2 times 5, 1 times 3, and 1 times 3. Nope, that one doesn't... You know, I'm going to put this problem on the board because you really need to see the methods that you need to apply. So we're going to put that T back on the board. So we're going to put the dimensions, even the one that we already figured out, which is 2. Now these are all in centimeters. The side dimension here to here is 5. 
this dimension is 1, this dimension is 8. What are we missing? We got all the, oh yeah, we need this dimension here. That's 3. And it's the same thing over here. 3. So now, there's two ways you can do this. You can do a rectangle this way, do this rectangle, and then these two little rectangles. And if you did this, the overall height of this, what is the overall height? So from here to here is 5 inches, and then from here to here is 1 inch. So the overall height is 6 inches. So this would be 2 inches wide, 6 inches tall. So that would be 2 times 6. And each one of these is 1 inch by 3 inch. 1 by 3, 1 by 3. So it would be 2 times 6 plus 1 times 3 plus 1 times 3. Now there is no 2 times 6. They try to trick you there. Answer 18C is 2 times 5. If you did 2 times 5, that means you would have cut it off right there. Because this is 5 inches. But don't forget, there's another inch to take you up to the top. So this dimension overall, remember, is 6 inches. I think we're talking in inches here. Oh, we're talking in centimeters. So it's 6 centimeters. So it would be 6 times 2, or 2 times 6, times 1 times 3, times 1 times 3. So that's one way. That's breaking it into three rectangles. Now, you can break it into two rectangles and do the top of the T and the stem of the T, like I did here. Put your line across. Now you have this rectangle here. That rectangle is 8 inches, or 8 centimeters by 1 centimeter, so that's going to be 8 times 1. And this stem on the T is 5 inches, centimeters this way, 2 centimeters that way, so it's going to be 5 times 2. So 5 times 2 plus 8 times 1 and we have 18A is essentially the same mathematical sentence. 1 times 8 and 5 times 2. B is 3 times 5 and 1 times 8. 3 times 5. I can buy the 1 times 8, but it's not 3 inches or centimeters, it's two. So that can't be right. They miscalculated in figuring this out. The length of the T, that part of the T is three, and that part is three. Those two together equals six. Altogether it equals eight, so it's got to be two. Can't be three. So it wouldn't be three times five, it would be two times five. All right, we're almost done, kids. Number 19, Mr. Butler posts his students' artwork on a bulletin board. The width and length of the bulletin board are whole numbers. What could the dimension of the bulletin board be? So now they're really going to test you. It only gives you one piece of information, and that information is, is that its, its area is 15, so its area is going to equal 15 square feet, and its whole numbers. So in order to find area, you've got to multiply the length times the width or the base times the height, however you want to look at it. And those two whole numbers have got to equal 15. 
when they're multiplied together. So let's go with 5 and 3. What's 5 times 3? 15. Are there any other whole numbers that you can multiply that equals 15? Nope. 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times 8 is 16. So that don't work. 2 don't work. If we use 4 over there, if we made this side a 4, 4 times 3 would be 12, 4 times 4 would be 16. So it's either too small or too big. So the only numbers that work that are whole numbers that you can multiply together that will equal 15 is 5 times 3. You can try any other combination of whole numbers and I guarantee you it won't equal 15. And that, kids, ends the lessons you have in math. You have completed the entire, all of this great wisdom in math. I am so proud of you fourth graders. If you have any questions or anything else that you want to know about any of the stuff in this math book, don't be afraid to reach out to your teacher, get a hold of me, and let me know. Meanwhile, it's been great teaching you math. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, be kind, and mostly stay out of trouble. All right, guys, we'll see you later.